Now that we have looked at ways of adding shapes to our project, we're going to look at how to edit them, starting with how to select the shapes, then onto moving them around the cutting mat, also resizing them and rotating them. All of that will be covered in this lecture, and then we will move on to some other editing options in future lectures. So let's start with how to select an object. Well, there are several methods. One is the direct select method. So for that, I would move my cursor over the shape that I want to select. And you will notice that the cursor changes. So if I move back, it's the standard arrow. And if I move over, we've got this crosshairs arrow. Once that cursor has changed, left click, and you will see that a bounding box with handles is placed over that shape. This is the same regardless of the shape, and the bounding box will always extend to the furthest most points. So if your shape is square in format, even though it's a heart, we have the square box around it. However, for an object that is rectangular, that will extend to the furthest point of that cutting design. The same for text. However, it will have additional white space, top and bottom, to accommodate either capital letters or letters with longer tails. So, that's the direct method. An indirect method would be to drag a bounding box or a selection box around your shape. To do this, position your cursor outside of the shape left click and then drag and you will see a blue selection box appear drag that until your shape has been selected you don't have to go all the way over you can just go into part of that shape and you can see the bounding box is applied and then release your mouse button that has now selected that shape but what if you want to select more than one shape and apply changes to both well with at least one other shape selected, we can move our cursor over another shape, press the shift key on the keyboard, and then left click. And as you can see, that has now selected both shapes. However, there are no handles. Those won't appear until we group the objects. I will be covering grouping in a separate lecture later. We can add more than one shape to the selection by holding down the shift key and clicking over other objects on the mat. So for example, if you wanted to weld or group things, you would want to select more than one shape for that task. Again, grouping and welding covered later in this course. We can also use the selection box to do this by clicking and dragging the selection box over multiple objects. And you can see how there's a blue dashed line now appearing over those three objects that the selection box came into contact with. A shortcut to select everything on your cutting mat would be to press the letter A on your keyboard. And there you can see by pressing the letter A it has selected all of the objects that are currently in that project on screen. If you have accidentally selected more than you wanted, you can hold down the shift key, move your cursor back over a selected object and press the left click button on your mouse. And that will deselect those objects from your uh, selection. Okay, so that is selecting objects. Now let's take a look at moving them. This one is very simple. There is only one method, and that is to move your cursor over a selected object, left click and drag it. And then you can basically position it any way you like. If you want it to be cut in the project, then it has to be within that red dashed line that you see around the cutting mat. That's the cutting area. So you can see there's a slight overlap here, and I would need to select it and move it within that uh, cutting box or cutting area sorry to make sure that I don't get an error message saying things are outside the cutting area 
This resizing, or sorry, moving applies if you've got multiple objects selected as well. So here you can see I have the square and the heart selected. If I move my cursor over one of those shapes, click and drag, it will move both and it will retain the position that they originally had uh, in comparison to each other. Okay, what about if we want to resize an object? So first we would need to select the object we want to resize. And so you get a better view. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more using the zoom tool. There we go. So we can see we've got little blue circular handles around the outside of this bounding box. The vertical, so top and bottom, or the left and right handles will stretch the design in the direction that you drag. So you can see as you move your cursor over the handle, it gives you an idea of which direction it's going to move. And you would click and drag in order to make that action happen. If you want to retain the proportions, so vertical and horizontal proportions, you would use one of the corner handles. So click and drag as before. And you can see no matter how I move my mouse, the proportions are resized identically. This applies to all shapes and also to text. Okay, so if I zoom back out to the mat, then we can take a look now at another way to resize an object. For example, if we wanted to be more precise about the size of an object, I can activate the Properties dialog box by hovering my cursor over this icon up here, the little box with three horizontal lines. Click on it and you will see the Properties dialog box appear. In the top, we have Size and Angle. These two measurements are the height and the width of the object. If we want to maintain the aspect ratio, so as I said, the horizontal and the vertical dimensions change simultaneously, we must make sure that the tick box is checked here. We would then either use the plus or minus buttons on either of these dimensions, or we can type in and press enter. That's a little bit too big, I think. So we'll go back down to four and you can change that. If you want to stretch it in a particular direction, you can turn off the aspect ratio lock and then we can change the individual dimensions. So you have height and width. So if I change the height here to six inches, we can see that's now stretched. So that is another way of resizing. We have one more available to us in this properties dialog box, and that's the percentage scale. If we hover our uh, cursor over this icon, click it, we can then type in a percentage in order to resize it by. So for example, if you have a scanned pattern that you need to increase by 200%, you would select one of these size options type in the percentage and then click OK. And you can see that's now basically doubled it in size. You can then reduce it again. So let's reduce it by 50%. And there we go, we're back to our original size. So that is all of the ways of resizing. Using the drag handles, using the properties box to type in the dimensions, or increasing or decreasing by a percentage. Now let's look at rotating an object. You will have noticed that when you select an object, not only are there the blue handles, there is this little tail that leads out to a green dot. This is the rotation handle. So if I move my cursor over this, you can see that it changes to a circular cursor 
with an arrow indicating a rotation. If I click and drag on it, I can basically freehand turn that to any degree I want. Whee, there we go. Okay, but what about if I need to do it by a specific um, dimension or measurement? Well, if I select the object, I can move my cursor over the rotation handle, hold down the shift key on the keyboard, click and drag. This will then constrain the rotation to 45 degree increments. What if I need something more precise? Well, you may already have noticed that in the properties dialog box, we have the angle option. This works in single degree increments or even half degree increments. So we can type in an exact angle that we want to rotate to and press enter or obviously use the plus or minus buttons either side of that dimension. Okay, that is selecting, moving, resizing and rotating.